Napa know-how. Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Love Talk Radio. Good afternoon. It's Wednesday afternoon, and it's a beautiful Wednesday afternoon, and I must say um, not all of you are in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hopefully you, some of you are, in which case you're listening to my local program. Um, otherwise, if you're not, I can tell you right now it's a good 75 degrees, I think, right here. So I have to say it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm very jealous to those motorcycles and other people that I hear outside that aren't working right now, so they're very, very fortunate. I myself have to take a quick note to say, yeah, I guess I'm pretty damn lucky today myself because one of the individuals, the one individual that's going to be on my show today, Brett Kingswell, um, I hear very, very good things about. And not just because his publicist tells me, but just because of the fact that I've listened to his interviews and I've seen him on Facebook. And there's nothing bad that I actually have to say about this gentlemen. I'm actually quite excited to have the show today. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get an opportunity to kind of learn about the man behind the music, so to speak. I think a lot of times when people do their interviews, um, they don't always take five seconds to try to find out who that person is besides just being a musician. So on this show, as you know, if you ever listen in, obviously um, I go above and beyond and look at all different things. So without further ado, we're going to put him on the line and let's get started with the interview and see what he's got to say. Hello. Hello. This is Brett Kingswell. It is, indeed. Hi. Oh, my God. <laughs> you sound <laughs> completely different. I wasn't I sure what you I sound completely different from my music? Oh, my God. We'll get into that. That's the first thing we're going to get into. But okay. this is a rarity, so I have to do this. And the reason I waited for you to come on air to listen to this is because you should hear this. Um, you know, of course, who Deborah Patricia Wood is. And without Deborah, of course, you wouldn't be on my show right now. So I want to take 30 seconds because I never do this. You were probably the sixth or seventh artist that I've interviewed that she has brought my way. So I want to take 30 seconds to just say something to her and well to you for you to listen on your interview. So I hope you don't mind. Uh, let's just take a little, little bit of time. Deborah, I want you to listen to this. Deborah and I have become very, very steadfast friends, and I think that unfortunately, publicly, it's very rarely ever noted, and let me be the first one to do so, to say she is probably one of the most kindest, hardworking, consummate professional individuals I've ever had the pleasure to ever work with and to meet. Her artists are extraordinary. The work that she does is amazing. I don't think she gets nearly recognized as enough for it. And I just, I am so excited that I'm coming to Canada to get to meet her and hopefully you and all of her artists. So this is my very large shout out in a very embarrassing way to Deborah Patricia Wood. I love you, my friend, and I thank you so much for all of the work that you do each and every day to bring me people like this guy that we're going to sit and talk about for the next hour. So that was it. I just wanted to blab about for 30 seconds. So hi. Hi. Back to you. All right. Did she prepare you? This is going to be a no. very different interview. <laughs> okay, good. No, you know what? I, don't <laughs> worry. I, I, checked, I checked you out. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's start out your interview with what I call a bang. This is the first thing that I thought about when I actually researched you. Um. With great certainty, I'm going to make this particular association, or I should say assertion. You've probably never heard another radio show host ever say these words to you. But your singing voice does not match your physical looks. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Do you know what I mean by that? I hear it all the time. I think people when they, oh, when they hear it. What? <laughs> I thought I was going to be original there at that one. I'm like, the, the minute your first song I listened to it, I was like, what? It's completely off guard what's up no with i that? think you picture some an older bigger sort of gruffer yes. kind of kind of person yes but that's yes. that's my sound so what can i say oh my god look at this it, it was just it was so deep it, kind of that i can feel it resonating through his chest sort of sound it's just really 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 deep um so you didn't train yourself to get that pitch because i know some musicians purposely try to get that sound so this is just you naturally you don't have to work at it no, that's you know that's that's where my that's where my voice and where I, that's where I like singing from where I'm the most comfortable coming from you know that's kind of the voice okay. that I've carved out for myself and sure yeah it's pretty natural for me. Well, and I also made a secondary observation. I've I've kind of watched some of your stage presentation and the mannerisms being as you are. Um, 
I think you're more reflective of classic rock singers compared to like a country singer. Like Kid Rock is immediate. The first thing I thought of was I saw this comparative nature of Kid Rock. Do you think I'm like way off base or drinking when I think this, or what do you no, think? No, no, absolutely not. I'd love to share a stage with Kid Rock someday. I mean, I came from a classic rock background, and that's probably not not where my heart's at, but I've listened to all kinds of music, including hip-hop, including country, classic rock, grunge rock, and everything. So definitely there's a huge influence from all those things in there, and I think it certainly uh, it definitely resonates with the music and with the, with the on-stage performances as well. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I think that'd be a great pairing, actually. Really? I think so. Yeah, because he's coming here to Milwaukee for our Harley 110th anniversary celebration, which is in my hometown. And so the whole goal by the end of this interview is for you to say, yes, Cindy, I'm going to come to Wisconsin, and yes, I'm going to perform, because he happens to be coming to our stage and hopefully coming to this show, and if not, oh, this wow. show, my other show, my Sam Crow radio show. Yeah. Really um, amazing. Which, oh, I would love, yeah. I'll tell you, at the start of your interview, I'd love to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll just see how the rest of this interview goes, because <laughs> I want to learn more about you, and obviously everybody else wants to learn more about you. Um, I've noticed in watching some of your other interviews and listening to them that you've been coined what people would call a late bloomer, but I beg to differ. I prefer to call you what we call an on-timer, which is kind of beating to your own internal drum, because there's a bunch of musicians I know that actually didn't start composing and or singing really until they were in their 40s. Um, so I, I think you're just fine, obviously. And I know that you've had a number of occupational endeavors, um, actor, model, athlete, firefighter. Okay, so first of all, i got to ask this question. Never had a firefighter on my show. Have you ever seen an unattractive firefighter get hired? <laughs> well, I swear to God, yeah. it's like hot and it has to be on the application because honestly, That's none of you are That's for you to judge, others. definitely. Seriously. Um, no, we're all – no, I'm just kidding. Um Seriously? I don't know. I can't answer that question, but it certainly is a, a highly revered and touted occupation. So we all we're all lucky in that regard. I think I think that even just wearing the uniform sometimes, you know, kind of goes a long way in that regard. Oh, but I that's not why we do oh, it. That's for sure. Oh, definitely not. Um, actually, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you. If maybe you could commence with the earliest job titles you held, just maybe give our listeners some details as to some of the rewards you've gotten, either personally or professionally, from each one of these fields that you've been in. Okay, well, I've always, um, in my younger years, I was right into sports. Um, into school growing up, went to university, so I learned a lot of things doing that about teamwork and, and just growing and, and becoming who I was as an individual. And then, as you said, was I a late bloomer or not? I'm not sure, but I started playing guitar at the age of 23, and as soon as that happened, it pretty much took over my life in that direction. But I'm an adventurous guy. I like to have my eggs in a lot of baskets, um, so I got into firefighting as well, like you said, and just some other endeavors to keep me busy and to keep keep life interesting. So. Music, obviously, I mean, is is um, is pardon the pun, but it's the song of my heart. It's it's been my driving force for years, and it's probably the thing I love to do the most. Just writing, recording, performing, and I've uh, done some traveling with it and had some unbelievable experiences with that. Being uh, on, the, on the fire department is obviously has its own rewards. It's just an absolute honor to be able to hold that position and just be the member of the community that I am. And like you said, some of the other things that I do with acting and um, I'm an artist as well. Just like I said, it's all it's all so rewarding in its own way, and I'm lucky to be able to to do all of it. Do you think there's a possibility that you might revisit any of these while being an active musician? Do you think you'll have the time or the drive for that matter? I mean, I love the fire is important to me, um, definitely. The other stuff, you know, it, it'll always be around. It'll always be there. I'm, I'll always be an artist in every different way, but I still want to try a bunch of different new things as well. So. As, moving forward, who knows what will be the next um, thing that I'll jump into, but certainly I hope to get some more things under my belt, try some new things, and like I said, music is, is definitely the the one that keeps me going the most. So wherever life takes me, I'll make the most of it. <laughs> now, as it relates to the component with you being a musician, do you think that you could intertwine like you've been in the acting field before? So would you or have you ever composed for television, theater, et cetera? Would you do that? Have you been asked to do it? Yeah, I have actually. Yeah, I've had. I mean, I've had original works played on in TV and film. I've also worked with um, a lot of Toronto, Toronto directors and producers for short films and even some, some indie projects and even some bigger stuff and getting uh, soundtracks and scores done for them. I love doing that stuff as well as doing what I do, whether it's the country stuff I'm doing or if it's something totally, you know, something completely different. That's fine too. I, I love just 
an opportunity to get into someone else's head, see what they're doing, their concepts, their ideas, their ideas. And if they bring that to me and I can, you know, put that forth sonically, then that's an awesome opportunity as well. Love doing it. Hmm. Okay, wonderful. Now, if you have had a conversation with your gal, uh, Deborah, you would know that I take any and all precautions to make sure that I embarrass each and every one of my guests amply. So there's something I'm going to tell you, and I want to get your reaction on this. this and it right, was just information on. that was funneled to me today, actually. There was a woman who apparently, I don't know if she interviewed you or had an encounter with you. So I guess here's the question. If you were approached by an individual to ever read a chapter of Fifty Shades of Grey, would you do it? Ask that again, sorry. <laughs> this to read it like woman, it was... You, like, literally would read it to her. I don't know if it was a combination of your looks and, of course, your <laughs> voice, but she was like, oh, my God, you could read me Fifty Shades of Grey. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's like, what? 30-ish, but I just want to get sure, your I, I was like, my jaw dropped. I'm like, oh, my God, really? Yeah. Oh, well, absolutely. You, uh, I mean, of course, for sure. I don't take uh, – I take what I do seriously, but not myself, and I think that would be absolutely yeah. hilarious. So you got to do, do, you you do better than that to embarrass me. Oh, don't worry. It's coming. Um, okay. <laughs> wow. Tell Crow today. Are you always this serious? You're like my only serious guest. I'm usually by I'm not, now. Okay. I'll, I will loosen the strings a bit here. Okay, you do that. You just sound like a very serious consummate professional, which is, is a very <laughs> serious interview, you know, because on my show, we're all about serious. Not, I'm supposed to be out of the norm, which is why you're on my show right now. Gotcha. Um, just out of curiosity, just because I hear this so frequently um, in all sorts of places, the hoopla that surrounds you, um, I mean, do you take that very seriously or you kind of just let it all roll off your back like, yeah, yeah, yeah? Because I am sure that you have to be abundantly aware of how many times a day women are like, oh, my God, he's so hot, he's so breathtakingly gorgeous, blah, 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 that sort of stuff. What was the first part of that question, sorry? <laughs> I'm sorry that you got caught up in your own sorry. revelry there. Um, no, just the hoopla that surrounds it. I mean, obviously, when you have an individual oh, who is. Yeah, when you're talented in one realm and then all of a sudden you add on the looks, et cetera, people tend to, and, I, and forgive me for saying this, but I do read a lot of times where people talk about the physicality factor of you, obviously, because that plays a part in it. So do you ever kind of buy into that hoopla or are you kind of like one of those people that's like, you know what, I'm just a guy. I mean, you know, people are getting all hung up on this, but, you know, they are female. So I'm just oh, curious no, your well, take on that. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm just a regular, like, I'm just a regular dude for sure. Um, but we, we, you know, we, we try to make the most of, of everything we've got in, in our toolbox for sure. It's, we understand the world we live in and if we, you know, we try to get some great picks and some great images to go along with what we consider to be great music. And I definitely want to be most known for how I sound, but at the same time, if, uh, you know, what, whatever works for me, definitely. So, but I laugh at it all. I don't take it seriously. And I'm just, I guess I just blush a lot. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious! Now, I would I am I to presume, and this is more so for the benefit that of people that are listening that aren't in this realm necessarily. Are you restrictive as it relates to meaning people coming at you and and requiring physicality requirements? You'll work out this often. You'll eat this, this, and this. I mean, are you on a regimen of some sort as it relates to that? Nothing set in stone, nothing regimented, but um, just okay. in, in the world I live in, both with you know with being a performer and, and uh, with being a firefighter as well, I definitely make taking care of myself a huge priority. I eat pretty well. I work out regularly, but I do enjoy, I'm a good Canadian boy, so we love drinking beer. And I have my vices as well, but it's it's definitely very important for me to stay in shape, both for, the, for those things and just for my life. I need to, to stay young sure. and be young. So, uh, yeah, staying, staying fit and healthy is, I can't imagine anything really more, anything more important really. Certainly. And just out of curiosity, I mean, I know this is a question that was played in. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to assume from research you're in your early 30s, or would I be mistaken? You're close, mid-30s. Ha-ha, I was right. Okay, good. There you go, Deborah. <laughs> I was right. Thank you. All right, moving along. Now, in doing my research, I stumbled upon the fact that you had at one point in time participated in what they call the Emerge Artists Showcase, which is actually a monthly musical event for Toronto artists. Maybe just explain to us a little bit how avenues such as this provided you some aid or assistance in your pursuit to achieving musical recognition. Sure, yeah. I mean, um, we're always looking for, for great ways to get out there and perform and get support in Toronto or wherever we are, wherever we are in Ontario. And I actually, my producer that I linked up with, Ron Allen, and his partner, Cindy Wilson, um, who are also part of my management team, 
Originally, I'd set up these uh, Murders Artist Showcase series in Toronto, and they're just an awesome uh, collective group of some incredibly talented musicians, singers, songwriters, and, and otherwise from Toronto and the surrounding area. And they just put these great shows on where we just get all, ki all kinds of different music and just great supportive people around. And it's great to get, you know, the people, the eyes and ears that are really paying attention in the city to come out and have a great place to come with great energy and great people and great musicians. And, uh, yeah, it's a great, it's a, it's a really good platform. Um, to get other things cooking, so that was those were some of the first shows I played with this new country project, and they've really been, yeah, like I said, a platform to some bigger and better things that we've got cooking for this summer. Okay, one of the things that I know that I usually try to ask most musicians that come on here, and this is more beneficial to those that are listening who might be emergent uh, individuals, somebody who's kind of blooming out there and in process. If you were to speak to them right now, what would you tell them is the one integral thing that they need to focus on most? in terms of success in this business? I, for me, I'm still learning every day, but if I had to give one piece of advice to up-and-coming musicians, it's to just to get out there. Meet other people, connect, create new opportunities, can create new roads, write with people, perform with people. Don't hold your project close to your chest. Don't hold your music too close to you. Just get out there and create, create opportunities. You could have the greatest song or the greatest band that no one's ever heard, and it does you no good sitting on your couch waiting around. So... Go to shows, make phone calls, meet people, write with people, like I said. And for me, that's been the number one thing in creating sort of new avenues and new roads for me. And, yeah, it's been, it's been almost magical in that regard. It's been amazing how quickly things have progressed for me. Oh, nice. That's wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now some of the girls are going to get jealous next because I'm your Facebook friend and they may not be. So because when I get to be your Facebook friend, I get to creep on you and I get to see things that not everybody else gets to see. That's what so, Facebook's all about, right? Well, yes, and of course, I know that some that are listening are probably thinking that they have their minds in the cutter, like, what is she getting to see? Well, nothing, okay, and I wouldn't do that. Anyways, one observation which um, unfortunately kind of tugged at my own heartstrings was about two weeks ago, you had revealed the passing of your best friend, which I had saw this, this note that was on there, and I was so sorry to hear that. Um, if you're comfortable about talking about it, maybe just expound to us on that experience as far as was that – I know that sometimes artists and musicians will take uh, experiences such as that and turn it around into a positive, whereas they compose something about it or has it inspired you in any way whatsoever, that experience. And by the way, we are, I'm referring to your dog, obviously, in case people didn't know Yeah, that. i got to preface that in there. Um, yeah, I was just going to – You know what? I'm, it was two weeks ago, and I'm still kind of digesting it all. I take all kinds of my own personal experiences and turn them into positive – experience it through music and through through art but yeah it was a uh, anyone that owns a dog knows how tough it is to lose to lose one and if you just say it's just a dog you've obviously never had one so every country singer has his dog and this guy was wasn't a big dog he was just a little ass app so but he was my best friend he was at my feet every day so it's pretty weird to come home and not have him around and yeah it's it's a real unique connection i find that we get with our pets and it's a unique loss in that way too so yeah, I mean, I'll be all right. I'll definitely be getting another one, and I cherish the memories I have with the little guy. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been difficult, and I probably will have a song penned about it in no time. Oh, that's wonderful. My goodness. And I've never been able to – I mean, I understand that. I hear that a lot, actually, but I have kids. I mean, I always opted for children, not pets. You can't really right. have time for both. It's really either one or the other, so I kind okay. of get where you're coming from, them. So I'm so sorry, my goodness, because they really are lovely pictures. If you ever get a chance to go and look at Brett's page, you'll see that they're just they're adorable. I mean, you you just you just look well together. You click well together. For lack of yeah, he made, we made each other pretty happy. So, but Definitely. you know, he he, sure. he lived he lived to be 11. He he had a, a happy and healthy life right up until the end, and he just he went quickly. So I'm 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 glad for that, and I'm glad for the time good. I have him. Goodness. Okay. Good. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. I appreciate oh, it. Good. Now, um. Not every artist that comes on this show, I, I always say certain things to. There were two reasons why I was pleasantly and, and very personally delighted to do this interview, and this is one of them, one of two that I'll cite. I came across, in looking at your music, that you do an actual rendition of the classic song um, Uninvited by Alanis Morissette. Now, for me personally, that holds special significance because um, – my very long-term best friend and I have parted ways. And this song, this particular song, is a signature song for her that she plays at every show. So up until today, yours is the first version I've listened to for months and months and months. And without crying, I may add. So oh, that's wow. Here. 
Yeah, that was a big deal for me, and I was very impressed by that. And and a male version at that, because typically to anybody who's listening or has listened to her song in the past, it's more of a high-pitched song. So I think it's rare that a male should attempt to do such a song. So I wanted to ask what prompted you to choose this particular song to try. Gotcha. Well, I'm certainly sorry to hear about your, you and your friend. Um, Thank you. But, yeah, that, that song, is I've always loved it. I've always just thought it was a really unique, dark, almost kind of had a creepy feeling to it. And I've just, over the years, I, I was thinking, how am I going to interpret this song? And then I just took a stab at it. And like you said, yeah, it is a high-pitched song, but I took kind of a different, kind of downtrodden acoustic approach to it. And, yeah, I got some decent response from it. And I really I really enjoy taking a song that's, you know, out of, out of my – out of my field, and if if it's by a female, that gives me a unique challenge too. How I'm going to interpret it. So that was a fun one to do, and um, sure. yeah, yeah. Thanks very much for that. Well, no, not at all. And you know, obviously, as we're talking with this higher in tone and pitch, now, do you foresee yourself being equipped to change to acclimate to a higher tone eventually, or having a, even a willingness to do so? Let's say if it's warranted for a project somewhere down the line. A willingness to to try anything, absolutely. I. I know my I know my voice pretty well. I'm getting to know it better, and I know what, what I'm good at and what I'm not so good at. And, and I do sing from a lower register and, and a lower octave range, and that's where I'm comfortable, and that's sort of where I fit in better. But um, you know, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm always willing to to give something a try. If, if the song or the project needs it, then uh, I'm absolutely willing to do it. But like I said, I know where my strengths lie, and they're they're in the bottom end. Sure, I gotcha. All right, well, before we go on to number two reason why I like you amongst the 50 other reasons that other people have talked to me about, <laughs> we're going to go to a little levity first because I'm pretty sure once we switch to the next one, there might actually be a tear in my eye, so we don't want to go there yet. Um, as you had cited earlier, I know that you do original artwork, and I've obviously seen some of the artwork on your page. So I was just curious to ask the how, where, when, and why, which is what I like to always ask about that kind of stuff. When you started, how you got into it, why do you do it, that sort of thing. When I yeah I I like I said when I was younger I was into sports and I was in you know I went to university and stuff and then I started work, get out into the work world and it wasn't really for me and that's when I picked up the guitar and started traveling and just really started to find my artistic voice and just loved every aspect of it and, and that was many years ago and to this day that's that's pretty much what I do so I guess I started painting probably I don't know maybe maybe 15 years ago or so. Um, kind of when I got into doing the music as well, and it's just a, it's I, I get a huge kick out of it. It's fun to do. It's a great release. It's a great way for me to emote and sort of put that on on canvas how I'm feeling. Most of it's abstract, but uh, I still do it. I still I do all kinds of all kinds of different artistic projects, and it just keeps me busy, keeps me out of trouble. And like I said, I just really enjoy doing it. So whether it's music or painting or or anything, it's it's something that is a great pastime for me, and I I don't think I'll ever get bored of it. Yeah, and that's what I was so shocked about is because it's so abstract, because in your music it usually seems very thematic and, and always, you know, something cognizant, not knowing you 100% from personal experience, whereas with the artwork it's just, it's all over the place. There's no real, it's just whatever comes to your mind apparently at that particular moment, which I thought was really Yeah, cool. for sure. So I, I literally that? throw paint at canvas most of the time, and, and, and sometimes it, you know, it really, like I said, it kind of emotes how I'm feeling or what I'm the message I'm going to, trying to get across, but in an entirely different way than music, which, like you said, is far more crafted and precise. And this is a lot more loose and free flowing, and and they're different, but at the same time, they, they, they're kind of the same for me because they're both just ways of being expressive, just different mediums. Sure, I imagine so. So I imagine if you're pretty pissed off, I can only imagine or ascertain what that picture would look like. <laughs> I don't know that you often, probably but... get pissed that often. But that's a good thing, definitely. Yeah. Okay, now I've, again, back to the Facebook page, one of the things that I noticed, and yes, it's true, there's like 8,000 pictures of, let's see, you on your page. I've, I've never looked at anyone else's profile that had that many pictures of themselves. Literally. I mean, like, literally. It's all you. Every every time I turn around, every post is like a different pose in different in different clothes. Oh, wait, that's right. Without half your clothes, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, oh, my God. Um, there's not a whole lot. I don't see a whole lot of you on your page. Does that make sense to you? Because it made sense to me. Do you know oh, what you I mean? See, you don't like, see a whole lot of me on my page? No. All I'm seeing is pictures. I'm not seeing you. Does that make sense to you? I was uh, curious yeah, why that was. I mean, I don't know. I don't think they're all posted by me. I think that they just, uh, you know, I end up playing shows and, and pictures end up up there. Um, and I think that, yeah, there's a lot of 
of you know very music specific stuff, but not you're right. There's not a lot of, of stuff that's maybe of a more personal nature. So that's a good yeah. point. I might need to kind of change gears a bit with that and, and uh, maybe right. Maybe put, that's get, my get job to highlight that page. stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean it would be nice. I think that and this just comes you know first and foremost because most of the time when people come on my show, it's not just because it's my job to interview. I'm a fan, and there's a reason that I'm a fan. So if I'm a fan of yours, I'm going to want to know, hey, I went and had a great lunch at so-and-so. Do you know what I mean? We I just do. Like you know, I, like I have been before, before and, I, and I probably should embrace that. For me, you know, I wasn't on Facebook for years and, and because of kind of the reasons we talked about before. You know, I, I'm, I'm sometimes not totally 100% comfortable with um, – sharing all those aspects of my personal life. But I guess when you start promoting yourself, you really need to create that balance because I certainly don't want to come across as arrogant or like I'm just posting pictures of myself strictly for promotion. Oh, no, reasons. not I at all. I do want people to get not to know me. Sure, I do want people to get to know me, but, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I yeah, yeah I, that's that's good advice, I, absolutely, for sure. <laughs> Listen to me. This isn't the mentoring show. And actually, some of that isn't best because typically if I was more of my sarcastic self, that I'd be like, oh, my God, he's all about him, him, him. So certainly I don't take you as arrogant whatsoever. It just seemed ironic to me. I'm like, hmm, where is this guy amongst all these pictures? That's kind of what I was thinking while I was looking right. at you. Is, well, you it's know, all you, but it's I not wonder, like, do, do people want – I guess they do. I guess from coming from a fan perspective, they do. But I wonder, do people want right. to know what I'm having for lunch and stuff? Like, I don't – I'm not sure if that's that's anything that's going well, to grab anyone's attention, but it does bring it down to a personal level, and I suppose that is important. Right. And I think what I need to tell you is this, for, and again, from a fan perspective, and, I, and I've told other celebrities that I've interviewed this before, um, we don't need to know those sorts of things. What we like to know is, hey, I went to such and such place, and I really enjoyed myself, or like a maybe an occasional blog of something, like a paragraph where you're like, you know what, Letting us know that you're a real guy. Like when Brett walks yeah. around and he's done with a show, he does this or he does this or this. It's cool to be able to relate. Or if Brett, you know, if Brett's courageous enough because, well, I have no filter. So on my page, you know, everything going on with me every second. You know, if we, we know you have hot, like when you showed about your dog, that's a big deal for people. Because no, you're they can absolutely right. You know, I, I, Otherwise, you're just Brett Kingwell. Yeah, a picture will go up of me, you know, at a gig or at a radio station or whatever, and you get the odd like or a comment. But then you throw something personal like that up, like a picture of me and my dog and a little message, and, and you know, you get a, you get a hundred or so comments. The people just really connecting with you on that level. So I definitely hear you. Definitely, and they're going to say some really good things about that. I, I do think that the more relatable you are to an audience, the more they're endeared to you. It's as simple as that. And and you want to be liked for you as well as you are liked for your music. I like you both because I'm privy to getting information about you before you came here. Otherwise, you'd be a stranger to me as you are to sure. most people you're just you know you sure. can be a pretty face etc sorry okay so there's that um <laughs> now upon glancing at you i noticed that and i'm sure other people do there's a variety of ink on you which stems on different body parts of course now i was curious to ask a couple questions were those there before you went into music or did you find yourself doing it after you became Both. A i think i got my first okay. tattoo when i was 15 just a little wolf on my shoulder and that began my Absolute love of body art. I think I have nine tattoos now, and they've just been happening progressively since then. Some big, some a uh, bit smaller, but they all have their own, their own, you know, personal meaning. Whether it's the meaning of a tattoo, or reminds me of a time, or you know, um, a place that I was in my life. I, I lived down in New York for a while, where I was uh, just a, uh, more of a rock musician back then. Signed to a record label down there, so I got a a big tattoo kind of commemorate, commemorating that experience. And I lived in Vancouver for some years, and I got, got one out there to kind of commemorate that experience as well. And they're kind of just souvenirs that, that I'll keep forever, and, and I love them. I absolutely adore them. So they're, gotcha. they're okay. not done, so I'm, for sure. I'm going to guess that there's no women on your body. There's no women, no. <laughs> okay, just check it. You know, you didn't see the type. I'm like, there's no way in hell there's a woman's name, let alone a woman's face on there. But I just oh, thought I'd throw that. that out there. No, now, just out of curiosity, uh, since this host, uh, it's on my bucket list. I have a fear of needles, so I'm getting a tattoo this year. So any good suggestion as far as to location and or what one should get? My general rule of thumb for getting a tattoo, and I tell people this, is – um, I will decide on an idea. I will take out a black magic marker and I'll draw it on the body part I think I want it on. I'll leave it there for a day. I'll check it out in the mirror. Maybe I'll take a picture and then I'll wait a year to that day. And if I still want it, I'll get it. Definitely okay. think hard before you get something, but at the same time, don't think too hard that you talk yourself out of doing something you want to do. There may never be the perfect <laughs> tattoo for you. So at the, you know, at the same time, I always hear people say, oh, well, what are you going to do when you're 80? And I say, when I'm 80, 
but my last concern, I think, is going to be my tattoos. I'm going to be glad I got them. I'm going to be glad I had them. I'm going to be glad that I can remember what they stand for. Um, so, yeah, I mean, be careful in getting them, um, but don't be too careful in not getting one, but also be very careful where you get it. Make sure it's a great artist. Never skimp on a tattoo. And body part-wise, some places are more or less painful than others. So do you have any thoughts of where you want to get it? Well, I guess what my thinking is this. I am bound in June to um, – I'm taking a trip to California, and I'm going to be hanging with um, some of the cast members of Sons of Anarchy. So my oh, guess wow. is Love these gotcha. boys are going to know – oh, then you'll be delighted when I tell you later in this interview. Um, I trust them. In fact, I, what I probably will do is when I have lunch with Emilio Rivera, you know who he is. Which guy Alvarez's is he? character. What's that? Sorry? Whose character? Uh, no, Emilio Rivera, which is um, – which McCall's character? Um, Marcus Alvarez. The Mayan, okay, the lead yeah, Mayan yeah. character, Amelia. Yeah, Mayan. We're going to go to lunch. So my, my guess is that if anybody would know where to get a tattoo, it would be him or um, Dayton Kelly or one of those guys. So I'm like, you know right. what, maybe when I'm in California, I'll have him take me to a shop and that kind of jazz. And just look at it. You know, like I said, it's overcoming. It's a bucket list thing. So it's like it's overcoming oh. a huge fear I've had for 43 years. So <laughs> this is a oh, big you're deal. Your dude, it's like, not that bad. Yeah, right. Okay, whatever. It's well, not. you come here from Canada and hold my hand, then we'll talk about it, okay? Because I'm here to tell you I'm totally due for Oh, that would be awesome. We'll get, that we'll would be awesome. Tattoos. There you go. Okay, speaking of tattoos and Harleys and things like that, obviously, of course, one of your promotional photos has you propped up on a bike. So it prompted me to want to ask two different things. Uh, first of all, if you're a rider and you own a bike, and let's hope like hell it's a Harley. And then second of all, I know that one of your July appearances is going to be at a bike rally, of course. So I'm just curious as to your integration into that world, and, and, and are you a frequent and avid rider? I have I've – all my – I grew up in a small town called Port Alcott, and dirt bikes was a huge part of my growing up. In fact, it's probably my fondest memory growing up is after school every day. To this day, when I smell gas, when I smell the smell of gas, I, I get that feeling of after school when I go home and take my dirt bike out. So I've always been a rider. Um, the bike you see me on there is an Harley. It is mine. It's a Yamaha. Um, but certainly that uh, world is something that <laughs> I break your heart. Did out. he just say that word, Yamaha, not Harley? Ouch. I know, I know. It's called Come on. Harley for sure. Come on. Really? Yeah. You ride well, anything but a Harley. I wish. I don't, have, I don't have the funds for a Harley just yet. But but I'm, I'm very interested in that world. I love I love bikes, really? and I love the whole culture that surrounds it. And, yeah, we're lucky enough to be uh, headlining the Muskoka uh, Biker Rally this summer, which is sponsored by Harley-Davidson. So we'll definitely be sniffing around a bit when we're there and seeing if right. we can't create and some relationships and stuff to get a little bit closer to that world for sure. Well, and I, I wanted to cite to actually Deborah and I talked about this um, off air, which you should probably know this. I, my secondary show, as I had mentioned, is called Sam Crow Radio. So my job is to interview the cast members of the Sons of Anarchy every week. So I am now officially, you know, well integrated into your into the biker world side of things. Now, if you had hold, told me that you were out riding around on a Harley, I would have gladly, after the end of this interview, had gotten you at least three thousand more followers, just like that. <laughs> in our world, on that, on the Sam Crow Radio side of things, they are all about Harleys and bike rallies and all that good stuff. So I am so hoping, I am so, so hoping, now that I have seen that you are participating in this bike rally, that I can offer you or at least facilitate to offer you a number of additional things in that world because I think that they would, I would, they would gladly take you with wide, or wide open arms, I should say. Yeah, I think it's a good fit. Hopefully next time we talk, I, I, can, uh, I can tell you I'm right. That would be cool. Sure. And that's yeah, cool. Exactly. That is amazingly cool. That's probably my favorite show, actually. It's on TV. So, well, look at that. So it's a good thing. It's kismet. There's a reason we met. This is good. Now, you know, I have to ask you this question because, well, one has to. Let's face it. You've been called a sex pot. You've been called adorable. You've been called hot. You've been called gorgeous. There's probably about four more adjectives I could probably not say on air that I shouldn't. So basically the bottom line is is that women are lusting after you left, right, and sideways. So I, of course, as the interviewer, have to ask the inevitable question, is Hello? he single oh. or is he taken? You know what? I lost you there for a second. You're going to have to give me that again. Uh. <laughs> you went to, it went okay. really quiet. I thought I almost hung up. How ironic, right? Girls, how ironic was that? <laughs> now, you know I have to ask the token girl question because there's only about thousands upon thousands of legions of women out there that want to know – how do I get a date with this guy? So before you answer that question, I should probably ask the inevitable question, which is either you're going to break hearts all over or you're going to tell me, why no, Cindy, I'm single. Why no, Cindy, I'm single. Oh, my, shut the front door. <laughs> it's 
true. You're bullshitting me. You're no. saying this because you're on air. So if I ask you to talk here, you're going to tell me the same thing. I am. We're not buying this, girls, are we? Okay. <laughs> so what does it take to get Brett King, King Wells' attention? Let's say, what, do you go to every show? I mean, what what's for you, obviously, because you're more in a spotlight and that kind of good stuff, um, what's a girl got to do to get your attention? I mean, this must be very, very overwhelming to the average person who comes in and, and wants to get your attention. Uh, yeah, I, I guess, in a way, I, I didn't really follow it like that. But what will it take to get my attention? Um mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm very drawn to the things I'm very drawn to in women with the things I'm drawn to in my own life, which is you know uh, creative, artistic intelligence and things like that. Like I I can't help but just love any musician sure. or anyone who sings or anything like that. So that's that's always something that really grabs me. Um, just good people for sure. I mean, there's lots sure. of great looking girls and and all kinds of different people out there. But I like to meet uh, good grounded people who who you know just yeah like good people with with good morals and take care of each other and, and just, like I said, very drawn to the artistic side of things too. So Definitely. And, of course, you know, I have an in here, ladies, see, so because I had heard the chocolate comment, so I should send you some truffles because I need chocolate truffles. You would like that. So, girls, buy them chocolate, be very simplistic, be artistic, and more importantly, know probably every song he's ever sang. And watch. <laughs> that goes um, well, yeah, definitely. Just, you know, trying to help you out here a little bit. There you go. I oh, my God, I can't that. believe it. The masses are, like, going nuts right now. Oh, my God, praise the Lord, he's single. Okay. <laughs> um, so the second reason that I adore you so very much resides much, much closer to my own soul. Um, I know that you are going to be lending your musical talent to an upcoming charity event on May 30th, which is entitled Total Recall, which is going to be taking place at the Phoenix Concert uh, Theater in Toronto. Now, this is uh, being held in support of an organization called Free to Be, which I did not know anything about until I started to research it. Now, their mission is to raise funds to support research, education, and therapy for children with neurological disorders. Now, a little less than a month ago, my eight-year-old actually has been diagnosed with a neurological disorder, which we... um, we have been talking about for the last month on my page because I'm a very personal person. So I was I was extremely moved um, in your election to to do such a very kind thing. So I want you to know that I will certainly personally do anything in my power to assist in the promotion of this event and for you. I think uh, it's very moving and very very much appreciated. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, that's 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 really hard to hear. I'm really sorry to hear that. But at the same time, like you said, I. For me, it's uh, it's a no-brainer when it comes to stuff like that. If there's ever, I mean, the real the real heroes are out there slugging it out every day. If I can just use one of like one of my small small talents to help out and do what I love to do and help raise some money for something as as amazing as this 3 b Foundation or any other charity, whether it's children, or animals, or disease, anything, I'm I'm it's not ten times out of ten I'll say yes, absolutely. I actually approached them hmm. to see if um, they allowed me to be a part of it, and they were more than happy to have me on the bill. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. like I said, it's Absolutely. a no-brainer. And, awesome. and being, I mean, being okay. a, on the fire department and stuff, uh, this, is, this, this is something that's important to all of us, and it's just kind of what we do. So we're always looking for opportunities to help out people in the community, whether it's on, on a level like that, whether it has anything to do with music or uh, just on any level. So it's, a, it's an honor to be part of things like that. And I'm going to go under the presumption, and this is just a presumption again, because, of course, obviously you have such a, a defined relationship as it's relative to, let's say, your dog that you had. Um, is animal charity something that you think somewhere down the road might come into play or you might have some organized work with? Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely. I haven't done anything specifically in that regard yet, but I would definitely, definitely look towards I mean, I get children is a big one for me, whether it's the, the Three to Be or Wish Foundation or something like that. Yes. And I, you know, you know, I've lost some family members to cancer and Parkinson's, so things like that are, are on the top of my list. But um, animals, I have a huge, huge soft spot for. In fact, I think my next dog, I'm, I'm looking right now to hopefully get a rescue. So, um, you know, definitely got a huge soft spot for for kids and animals and anyone that anyone that's that's helpless in that regard and needs some help. I'd, I'd love to do it. That is amazing, wonderful. That's why I figured from a mom to you, you should know just how much it's appreciated, obviously, because I certainly wasn't expecting to be in that realm, and it's not very often. It's very, very ironic that you would be coming on my show and be doing something. Yeah, that that is ironic. Well, I'm really sorry to hear that, but... Yeah. Well, it's okay. Um, It's it's fine, actually. I'm learning to just cope. I was just... I put a post up about that yesterday, actually, and I I might get in touch with that foundation, actually. I'm I'm just trying to find ways to learn how to live with... uh, 
living with that. Being told is one thing, and then living with it is another. So Absolutely. Let's see I do. For sure. So we'll we'll certainly see how it goes. Uh, I have been privy, as I understand it. I know that very recently you had ended um, a full radio station tour where you went throughout Ontario, and I know this spring you're launching your tour, been there and back again. Maybe you describe to the audience. Um, the Ticket to your show, what is that going to entitle them to? What are they going to be looking forward to, as well as how far that span, that full tour will span or extend itself to, I should say? Well, the Been There and Back tour, for the most part, has actually happened already. What? I, um, Spring 2013. Yeah. What's that? Spring 2013. Spring 2013? Excited. Yeah, that's now. Well, yeah. yeah, I just got back from it. <laughs> Oh, sure. No one gave me the memo. Hello? Okay. Well, then let's talk about that tour you were just on, apparently. Don't yeah, that was uh, okay. a, a small, a, a, you know, a medium-sized Ontario tour I did with another country band out of Cambridge called Drew and the Foundation. So we hit the road together. I actually went, I actually went by myself and just did a, a, a solo uh, tour with these guys. I play by myself with a duo, a trio, um, and right up to a seven-piece band. I'm going to play some of the bigger stages. I have banjo and lap steel and everything. So anyways, this particular tour, I just went lean and mean, went uh, gorilla acoustic style, and we had a string of dates across Ontario. So that just recently happened, and then following that, um, with obviously with, with, De- uh, with Debbie, we... Um, dropped my first release to radio called From the Country, and I just uh, last week and a bit before did a big radio tour blast uh, across Ontario, hitting about 13 or 14 uh, country radio stations, doing interviews like this and performances, a couple TV spots. So, yeah, I've been out there on the road and just hitting as many places that will have me. It's been great. The great support in the country music community, and um, happy to be doing anything like that. So happy to be here talking to you as well. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now you're making me blush. Cut it off. I'm too old to be blushing, by the way. Um, <laughs> with, Never. You have – oh, cut it out. You have such a huge onslaught of popularity and um, obligations, as I understand that, on both sides of the fence, and you must be cognizant of the popularity that you – I mean, are you aware of the magnificence – for lack of, I don't even know what other term to use – I, I've looked at pictures on various occasions. I've watched interviews. I've seen an audience, and I've seen people react to you. And it's just nothing short of magnificence when you walk into a room. I'm not so sure that you're aware of this is how people view you regularly, or are you aware of this, and you are just gotten used to it? No, I, I mean, I, I don't. Look, I never look at it like that. I, I, I'm confident in what I do. I love doing music, so it's very easy for me to walk into a room or do or do something like this because I'm talking about or, or doing what it is I love to do. So I would say I'm not cognizant of it, but I think that in and of itself is 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 probably a bonus. Just doing what you do and doing it with no you know preconceived notions or anything contrived. Just music's great because unlike acting or unlike just other things in life, it allows me to just. I, I can just absolutely be me, do what I love to do, speak my voice, sing my songs, and and um, it's it's I won't say it's easy because it's a uh, it's definitely a grind, but it's easy in that it's it's what I love to do, so it makes it sure. makes me comfortable doing it. But thank you of very course. much. I no. appreciate that. Oh, it, it's obvious. Watch yourself sometimes. I'm serious. I. I... Well, I'm a very bad judge. I've never, I've done this for almost two years. I've never listened to one show I've ever done, not once. Right. I can't. Cool. I don't know how. I just don't. I don't know how. So I, I mean, I don't know. I've heard that from other actors and musicians too. Sometimes they won't watch their own work. They won't listen to their own work. But I think you should go back and look at yourself. I mean, just, just look at how other people react to you. It should be very, very obvious to you. And begged me to ask this question. I have a huge passion for writing. This is why I do what I do in part, but I also know that there's a mundane side of things. Do you have anything that you constitute as mundane in your life from a musical standpoint? Anything that you have to do regularly that you just dread? Um, my favorite things that I do are performing is, is my favorite thing to do, definitely. I love to play and get up on stage and just do my thing because, like I said, I'm comfortable and I'm in my world. I'm in the pocket. I love it. I love the, the, the songwriting process. Being in the studio is, is is not my favorite thing to be. I love getting in there and doing what I like to do, but at the same time, I love getting out of there and getting back to doing what I love doing more. And there is challenges for sure. I mean, social media is is is, is a big one these days. It's, it's just a huge thing you have to have going, and there's just a lot of times not enough time uh, hours in the day to to try to squeeze everything in. So I, I get I, sometimes I fall I fall back on those things, and I know that the increasing importance of of just connecting with your fans and and, and things in that regard are. Um, it's uber important, and just like I said, finding the time to do it, finding the time to do everything is probably uh, the biggest challenge. But but mundane wise, I mean, like I said, being a musician is 
and, and, and having people listen and pay attention to you is, is amazing. So I would hate to consider any of it mundane. Hmm. That's awesome. Now, somebody just got recently got me recently hooked on this damn show, Nashville. I'm sure you've heard of it, obviously, this new yeah. sensation about life in the road, blah, blah, blah. Always curious to ask this because, of course, obviously TV is dramatized. So just how much of that is genuine, meaning in I, general, I, not in Nashville, but on TV? I mean, I haven't really seen – I don't get a lot of chance to watch a lot of TV, so I, I would be lying if I said I knew much about the show. I know what I know of the show, absolutely, but – I'm sure there's you know a lot of dramatization in it, but I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of truth to it too, and, I, and I'm sure there's a lot of drama involved in it, and there's been no lack of drama in my musical journey, um, being in, in different bands and and being on the road and stuff like that. So I can't equate it exactly to the show, but I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of parallels for sure. Okay, gotcha. Good answer, definitely. Um, I guess we should talk about that. Uh from the country song of yours, which is actually the very first song I listened to when they discovered that your face and voice don't match. So good thing they sent it to me. <laughs> I, it was interesting because I listened to the, the music first, and then I watched your video second. Um, and, and it was neat just because, first of all, I'm not used to watching a video that's projected in black and white. Second of all, it's not you performing. It's just various images of you as compared to a live performance, which you don't see that often. Um so I'm curious, were you the mastermind behind that compilation, or was that somebody else's idea? No, that was, we needed, well, we knew we were dropping the song, and we didn't have a proper video done yet, so we knew we needed to get something up on YouTube. I mean, YouTube is probably the, sure. I mean, the, the main source that people are going to right now, you know, apart from radio stations or, or whatever. So obviously we needed to have something up there. So we thought, let's just get, let's just get a, the song up there with some images, and we're currently in the process of getting a proper, you know, more, you know, interesting video with the treatment and everything done. So really, I, I mean, I've been doing music for years. I took a little bit of time off to concentrate in the firefighting. And then last year, I, you know, last summer, I, I recorded from the country. And since from then till now, it's just been an absolute whirlwind of, of momentum and getting great things going on. So we're just getting our ducks in a row to make sure we have everything going on. But at the same time, we got so many great things cooking. So uh, keep your eyes definitely peeled for the upcoming official video. Oh, my goodness gracious. And, you know, it's funny. This is the very first time a publicist has ever sent over to me a clean copy and an explicit copy of a song. How funny is that? I'm like, okay, this is <laughs> not too bad. It's just a couple words in there. No, it's not. And it's Internet radio. So if you said fuck every five seconds, I'd still be playing it, obviously, because, hello, I interview Sons of Anarchy cast members, okay? What do you think I get on my show? Right. There you yeah. go. Real. We're 100% real on this show, of course. Um now, I would gather as it relates to songs, are most of your creations your own creations, or do you work with a team of songwriters to compose? That was kind of alluding back to one of the things that I would say I would give advice-wise to any up-and-coming musicians was uh, previously I did most of my songwriting by myself. And, you know, songs become really personal. A lot of times I think they can get away from you in that relatable sense because you're kind of writing from maybe a bit of too much of your own perspective or your own mind or your own thoughts or feelings. A lot of the stuff I'm writing for sure is by myself, but I've been getting out there and just meeting and writing with as many people as I can, and it's amazing uh, when you get in these think tanks with some of these great writers, the stuff you can come at and the speed you can come at it with and just keep banging songs off. And, and it's always about the next song, right? Let's get a song, let's, let's put her to bed, and let's keep writing and keep writing until we get that one that, that is the one. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tons of fun too. So definitely I've been um, trying to get out there as much as I can with some amazingly talented musicians. Now, of course, I have the song, so we're going to be playing it in a second. But the one other thing I wanted to ask you before I play it is, if, if I were to ask you personally, which out of all the songs you've done thus far would be what you'd call your signature song, the one you relate to the most, the one you like the most, which one would that be? From the country, for sure. That, that, was, the first, that, that, that was the lead-off song to this entire project that I'm doing. It was... It, it really sets the tone and is kind of actually anthemic for for where this album is headed and, and where this project is going right now. So it's a you know it's a fun, edgy kind of swampy, gritty modern day uh, story of a kind of a vagabond cowboy. <laughs> Look at that! And there it goes back to that cowboy reference again. And I'm still sticking by my word: classic rock singer, aka Kid Rock Jr. That's what I'm going with. I, I'm I'm not relating to the country. I don't know why. I'm just not seeing it. Maybe because I haven't seen yeah, it. It's not, it's not, it's not traditional that. country, that's for sure. But, I mean, right. Kid Rock has that crossover appeal, too, where he'll play, you know, he, he, right. he's got the hip-hop appeal, the rock appeal, but then he'll, he'll rock some of the biggest country stages as well, right? So we're kind of trying to live in that world, too, where we can 
kind of be fluid and, and be able to appeal to a broader uh, broader cross section of of interested listeners because country is huge, but it'd be great to get um, you know as many people on board as we can. Oh, definitely. I think crossover is a huge thing nowadays, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's really, really good to to expand your horizon, so we'll see. Well, let's see what the audience thinks of this. I'm going to shut up for three minutes and 45 seconds, and we're going to play from the country. And this is the explicit version, folks, because on this show we can do what the hell we want. So here we go. (laughs) Love it. Okay. Now, this is going to be weird because now I'm coming back to you and it's totally different sound. So this kind of weirds me out a little bit. I like that. <laughs> it's song. all me. Both, it's cool. It's all me. Yeah, both sides. I know. I know. But I haven't met you in person. So it's kind of like, oh, my God, this is so weird listening to the sound because it really is a very distinctively different sound than how you normally are. And I'm not complaining whatsoever. Um, I, I took a perusal of some of the other ballads, of course. And now if you just listen to these, this is I find this very funny. Some of Brett's other songs, Bad Boys, Freedom, Silence. SOS, Came to Fight, and Honey, Go Get My Gun. Now, let's look at all those titles. Do you, do you hear a resonating theme going on with all of this? Because I'm pretty sure I do. Or, or was that non-intentional? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, no, no. It's see this resonating good. thing? Look, that's her. So basically, you're not the quote-unquote good boy image that most people proclaim that you are. You know, the southern 
sweet gentleman, good boy, well, blah, blah, blah. I'm but I guess it's tough to, to get a real flavor for who I am on the phone. But if you come to one of my performances, yeah, I mean, we, we rock out pretty hard. And, and for me, the, song, the songs are, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's they're, they're tongue-in-cheek, but there is definitely a, a sort of a bad boy approach to it. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, there's definitely a theme across the board. It's a, a lot of good time partying songs, drinking with your friends, and, and that's that's the energy that I like to bring to the table musically now. Um, I came from my earlier projects were rock, and there was, you know, the 90s grunge, kind of the downtrodden and depressing stuff. I'm really totally done with that. I like to keep everything <clears throat> keep everything upbeat and, and really moving and happening and, and even funny at times. So for sure it's uh, – it's, it's all part of, of of my process for sure, and what I enjoy writing and what I enjoy performing, definitely. Gotcha. You're not Irish, are you? No, English and German. Yeah. You 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 would fit a traditional Irish. I'm an Irish woman. We like partying. We like to be <laughs> sassy, and we like to be very naughty. Very nice people on the outside, but just naughty folks sometimes. Just had to ask that question. That's now, do you all hope? Right, being naughty, yeah. Absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Case in point, this weekend, but that's a whole other story. Now, do you hope that your music is going to prove itself to be entertaining alone, or or do you want the effects to be lingering for the masses? You know, some people are very big on, I want my message across, blah, blah, blah. Some people just want to go out there and have a good time. Which side of the fence are you sitting on? I think somewhere in the middle. I hate to be a, a fence sitter, but... I, you know, I, I want people to resonate as well to my music as they can, but at the same time, it, there's nothing too heavy-handed in there or anything. It's it's supposed to be, you know, like I said, tongue-in-cheek and lighthearted. At the same time, it's got a real gritty and rise to it. So I think there's a, a pretty good market out there of people that can kind of relate to that sort of, you know, just kind of the, you know, the, the bad boy in all of us, I guess, sort of. Hmm. Or girl. Now, one of the things that I had projected in, in looking and thinking about you was, would, you're, would you ever solely be a singer-songwriter minus the instrument? Because I could picture that, where you don't play. And, and you have a band and just sing, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. I've, 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 it's funny. Um, from a comfortability standpoint, I think is, is a lot of the reasons why I or even a lot of artists do what they do and, and, and have a, a, an instrument you know, it's kind of like being at a bar and not holding a beer. You're kind of not sure what to do with yourself. But so for me, I've kind of always not a, not a crutch, but I mean, I love playing guitar and I love I love uh, you know that sort of expression on stage as well. But I, I would love to uh, delve into that world of, of of putting it down and trying something that'll be like like you said, more singer songwriter oriented. Right, definitely. Now, if I were to ask you, and this kind of goes without saying, and I don't expect you necessarily say just yourself, or maybe you will, I don't know. If I were to say to you now, all the musical success that you've garnished so far is largely due in part just yourself. Has there been one main influence? What would you say? Um, no, definitely not just myself. Um, I've been, you know, slugging it for a while. Came from again, sort of more of a rock background and a natural evolution into something that I think is more country, anyways. But um, you know. Me, Musician-wise, I've come across some great players and, and, and learned a lot from a lot of people. So I, I have to say that in that regard, I have a lot of people to thank. Um, my family has been amazing. They have been supportive in everything I've done, musically or otherwise. So that's been great. My friends as well. So m- most of my best friends are guys I knew since I was, was just a little guy. So they've been around me my whole life, through the whole journey, supporting me in every decision I made, coming out, and coming out to my shows and making sure to, to be great friends. And then this new leg of of, uh, of music for me right now, um, I've been lucky enough to hook up with some great people, including Debbie, uh, Ron Allen, my, my producer, and for my management team, and Cindy Wilson as well. Just people that I need to mention who have really made my life easier and helped me get to where I'm going. It's great having people yelling your name when you're not around. You know, just lets you allows you to freeze you up a bit to do the things that are you know that I should be doing. And yeah, I, I can't uh, say enough about about my team right now. So I'm really lucky. That's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. That's cool. And my last question before we get to the actual other stuff that we got to cover here. Um, for the future, let's say a year down the road, personally and professionally, where do you want to be? If I'm where I am right now, I'll be happy. And if I'm anywhere ahead, I'll be even happier. I mean, I, I, I'm, I love doing what I do both musically and with the fire department. Hopefully I can continue to do both. But like I said before, music is the song of my heart. So we're going to push as hard as we can. We've got some great stuff lined up for the summer. And in a year from now, hopefully we'll be just that one step ahead of the game, booking some bigger shows and, uh, you know, just get, uh, getting out there as much as we can. And if I can 
for me, getting to see the world is one of the most important things to me. So if I can do that with music, I'll be the luckiest guy in the world. So hopefully, hopefully we're rocking and rolling even more than more than now in a year. Okay. Well, I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to go through the onslaught of, or should I say, just the cluster of places where people can find you socially. So let me go through the rundown, and you can let me know if I've missed anything. Um, obviously, first and foremost, www.brettkingswellmusic.com. I know that you obviously have a Facebook presence, and that would be Brett Kingswell, of course. You are on MySpace, Reverb Nation. You have a Twitter handle, which is at Brett Kingswell. You are on YouTube. SoundCloud, OutboundMusic.com, and iTunes. Any other place? You got it. That's the list right there. Very good. I try. Well, yeah, that is part of my job to know all that stuff on how to find you everywhere. Now, sure. um, it, it, it is customary, and if you've checked me out, then you know that towards the very, very end of the show, there's always two things that I do. First and foremost, I usually take my 30 seconds to tell my guest exactly what I think of him. Um, which means you get to be quiet and I get to, to say if I like you or don't like you or whatever have you. But before I get to that, um, one of the things that I pride myself on um, in being in this business for almost two years is I've accumulated some really, really good friends and I've accumulated some really good opportunities. And sometimes I like to offer those opportunities to people that I get to meet. And you, my dear friend, I am hoping I will be able to do this too. Um, so I want to offer you the opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned, Sam Kerr Radio is um, my one-day-a-week show, and it is all Sons of Anarchy relative, and you fall right along that line more than I can tell you. So at some point when you're off of this phone call, we should probably discuss the likelihood of you participating in bike rallies, Sons of Anarchy events. And moreover, coincidentally, it happens that I need to have um, – I have a signature theme song for the show, but I will be rotating music on my show, and my show is listened to all 50 states and now overseas by the military as well. So I would be more than honored if you would consider the possibility of collaborating um, with my Sam Crow Radio Partnership. In any way, shape, or form, I would absolutely <laughs> love to. That is a perfect yes. fit. And talking about the military boys and stuff like that, I'd love <laughs> to get them on board with this yeah. stuff. That's it, awesome. it is. Yeah, we were talking about um, trying to put something together well if financially I can afford it. I mean, I would love to be able to offer my time. I would, I've been asked to go over there and to do an event live to where I would actually interview people live or they would perform live. Um, there's a countless numbers of opportunities, and I think that you, like I said, you, your music and you yourself personally fall along this gamut, and you come very highly recommended, and not just because Deborah tells me, but – it's obvious. It's in every picture that I look at, and it's every interview that I read. You're impressive for a very young man, and I like that very much. So I tend to try to help people in that circle when they are so very kind and impressive. So you should know that. No, thank having you so said much. All that, thank you so much, so so much. I totally appreciate that and the support. And oh, anything yeah. to do with that, you know where to find me, and I'm I'm your guy. <laughs> yes, that would be absolutely wonderful, certainly. Um, now, um, again, uh, Deborah and I have talked about this, and hopefully Cindy and myself and yourself can all come to terms somewhere at some point here in the near future because in August, uh, the Harley 110 celebration is here. And in a perfect world, Brett Kingswell would grace our state with his presence and with his music. And I think that would be absolutely lovely. There's no greater place to be with the bikers than here for August. So that's certainly another collaboration that we'll be working on as well. So now we get to that point in time where I have my 30 seconds to be able to tell you what I think of you. So hopefully you will get my full, this is what I think of you, just me to you. Brett Kingswell, this is what I can tell you. For being a young man, um, I think that you have touched more lives than I think you're competent or capable of being able to fully see yourself. I think all of us have a very hard time being able to take recognition fully and completely, to recognize, as I mentioned, the magnificence of one. Um, is very difficult. I think you're very humbled, and, and I like that so very much. The fact that you don't eat, eat into this whole popularity thing is even more enamoring. I think that your music is the dirt and the grit and the whole, here I am, take me as I am, with a very bad boy, just as you're saying and just as I'm saying. I like the message that comes across in it. It's appealing. It's appealing to the masses. Uh, you have a stage presence, which I like, and it's not just because of the type of music that you do. It's just how you carry yourself. Some people have a disposition that's very pleasing. Your disposition is pleasing, not because you're tattooed and you have a great ass and a nice face. You are pleasant. Your mannerisms, the way you speak, your manners, and how you present yourself, I find to be very impressive. I like to be surrounded by this. I want to be able to say that I hopefully, in some very, very small way, have hopefully 
touched on your career at some point to where we can get you some exposure, to where we can make you much bigger and make you to one day realize just how truly lucky we feel to know you. That's all. Wow. That was Amazing. It. <laughs> that is beyond sweet, and I don't even know how to respond to that other than just saying thank you very much. And in terms of the manners, I, I just owe it to, to, to my family. They just made sure that um, that was always something really important. So I appreciate that. They would too. Definitely. Definitely. And before I forget to tell you this, just so that you know this, shortly um, when we finish this interview, what will happen is, is I will post all of your information on my personal page and on my show page so that everybody can find out how to get a hold of you. And additionally, within, you know, I'd say about half an hour, anybody can go back all year round and go and listen to this because this is obviously an archived episode. So people will be listening to it all the time, certainly. Um, I obviously will need you to get a hold of me so that we can talk off of the air about all of this and, and try to get this worked out sooner than later, actually, because in a perfect world, and if I didn't think that Brett was obligated this weekend, I would snatch you up because I have a very important bike rally I'm going to this weekend, actually. This is now my life. Nice. Bike rallies all the time. <laughs> I like to grab people and take them with me all the time. But for sure. please promise me, promise me that in the future that if you need any form of promotion whatsoever, or even if you want to come back and talk about this lovely event you're participating in, or if you need help in any manner, know that you have the full support of either one of my shows and uh, of myself on a personal level. I think you're just absolutely a delight, and um, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. The pleasure was mine. Thank you so much for the interview and for the oh, support no. you're offering us. I, unbelievable. Just fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I hope you have yourself an absolutely wonderful weekend. And like I said, um, when you find that you have yourself some free time, definitely go ahead and get a hold of me. And please do, as I mentioned earlier in this interview, give some thought to that. I mean, I, I absolutely love the fact that Brett has 6,000 pictures, but I want to know who the guy is. And the only way to do that is for you to put something out there. So I really hope you consider doing that. I appreciate that. I absolutely will. Definitely. Sounds great. All right. You stay in touch, and I'll let you go and get back to your wonderful day, and I'm going to get off to the grocery store here shortly. You got it. Thanks again. All right, dear. Talk soon. Okay. Have a good one. You too. All right, folks. Was he not amazing or what? And can you believe that I just spent the last hour being obsessively nervous about talking to him? Oh, what an absolute, what a gem, what a gem, what a gem. Before I forget, let me go through one more time, www.brettkingswellmusic.com. He is on Facebook. His Twitter handle is at Brett Kingsville. He has an appearance on MySpace, Reverb Nation. His music can be found on iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, and OutboundMusic.com. And please do not forget, as I mentioned, that he was doing that charity event. And again, for this absolutely lovely organization, which I mentioned obviously is near and dear to my own heart, which is called Total Recall. It's on May 30th, and it's located at the Phoenix Concert Theater in Toronto, Canada, where I wish I could make an appearance because at this rate, Canada is going to get my heart and all of my attention. Um, once again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this interview, as always, thank you so very, very, very much to not only Brett Kingswell, but also to Deborah Patricia Wood, one of my absolute most favorite people who I am just dying to meet, which hopefully will happen in the next month. Um, please do not forget to make a note tomorrow, 5 o'clock Central Standard Time, Time. On my sister station, Sam Crow Radio, I'm going to be hosting Joseph Julian Sorio, and he is a former Sons of Anarchy actor, as well as on the uh, hit show Army Wives. So 5 o'clock Central Standard Time tomorrow, and that's for Sam Crow Radio. And then Friday, we have an especially special gift coming out to my show. Tammy Brumbeck, who happens to be the event coordinator for Lizzie's Ride, which happens to be the ride I was prefacing earlier. I'll be going to Indiana to participate in that. Um, she's going to be speaking about Lizzie and the ride and why it's so pertinent that you support her endeavors, but also myself. And that, obviously, this is my cause for this week. We're trying to raise $2,400 for a headstone for Lizzie so we can have a marker to, to commemorate her life and her death, of course. So please come and check us out. That's 1 o'clock Central Standard Time on Sin's Chat Corner, and that's on Friday. But I'll be posting about all that. You guys go out and enjoy this beautiful weather that we have today, and I'll be talking to you on Friday.